Now, another good practice uh, that you can use when you're developing these things is we're going to add in a couple of checks. Well, actually, just one check to, to get you started. All right, so what I'm going to do here is going to probably appear like wasted effort since everything right now is a calculation. But over time, when you use these models, you're going to um, you may get an error in a formula from a bad copy and paste, or you may have hard coded the number in, and we need to have a way that makes it easy to spot those types of issues. So uh, I just put in a simple check field here, and what we're going to do is say, if everything's working properly, the beginning inventory plus what is received in aggregate minus what is sold in aggregate minus the inventory for both finished goods, again, in that common unit of measure, in our case, tablets. That all has to equal zero if I, if I do that right, which it does. And then we can drag that forward. And then the last thing I'll do is this first cell, and I'll show you how this kind of works. It's just going to be a summation. Of everything here okay so again everything is correct so it's all showing zeros in our check field now how would you maybe use this let's say um, I had an inventory level here that somehow for a copy and paste reason uh, this actually turned out to be hard-coded in you'll notice that right away it's going to flag it, okay, something is wrong in this particular column. And then we can go up and start to investigate and see you know, what the issue is. If we had another one out here somewhere, well, actually the demand isn't going to change anything because it'll recalculate and do that on the fly. But let's change a receipt. Maybe we had something hard coded here. Oh, sorry. Again, since that's a recalculation, that'll be okay. So maybe here. Again, so it, it flags a spot where maybe we have an issue in our model. We can go and investigate. And here's where we know we accidentally hard-coded something. And the same goes for here, so just to correct it. So it seems really simple, and, and probably at this level of sophistication for a model, you may, you may think it's irrelevant. But as you build this out, you know, building in these nice checks and balances, uh, it does become valuable. It helps identify issues, and when you get a large spreadsheet, it's really easy to, to have something hard-coded that could be causing you problems, yet it could go unnoticed until you actually have a, a supply issue in real life that happened to be the result of, of an error in your planning model. So anyway, I hope that um, helps you understand how you at least get started in modeling a supply chain in Excel. Again, we, we covered really one finished good at a finished goods distribution center. We showed how to do that in monthly buckets and weekly buckets. And then we moved on to showing how you would go about doing that if you wanted to model, let's say, two finished goods that are similar in nature at the same uh, distribution center. And then how you might add some aggregation fields in uh, that'll then help you uh, further on when, in your supply chain modeling when you start to build this out and model upstream operations. So anyway, that's uh, the start. Uh, very simple, um, but it gets us uh, started down the path of modeling a supply chain in Microsoft Excel.